football and Bo's maize and blue against Woody's scarlet and gray. A classic confrontation, but not many national titles. In basketball, both have achieved the ultimate prize. In 1960, the Buckeyes fulfilled their dream for Fred Taylor. And in 1989, the Wolverines had their magical tournament run for Steve Fisher. Tonight, it's Fisher's 18th ranked Wolverines against number five Ohio State and Randy Ayers. A proud tradition continues. The really great rivalries have teams that in their fight songs mention the other state. In the state of Ohio, it's we don't give a damn about the whole state of Michigan. We're from Ohio, and tonight, live from St. John Arena in Columbus, it's the Border Rivalry Reborn. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Brando, welcoming you to game one of Big Tuesday, and it couldn't be any bigger for the Buckeyes. Take a look at the standings in the Big Ten, and it certainly illustrates how important this game is. Ohio State trying to keep pace with Indiana, and when you consider the big picture, the NCAA tournament dance, this is more of a seeding game for a top seed, and Larry Connolly is by my side. Yes, conference means a great deal, but the national picture is really at stake. Tim, it is, but March, for us basketball junkies, means selection and seeding. For the Big Ten, it's very important because it means the season. You take a look at the two clubs, really, they're fighting for the top spot. Ohio State schedule, very favorable. Indiana's got three tough road games, and I really think the schedule really favors Ohio State down the stretch. Yeah, but they're at home tonight against the Wolverines. What will be the key in this ball game as you see it? I think it's very obvious. It's going to be Ohio State's press. If they're able to really get out and get after Michigan, it'll be a long night. But you know what? I think Michigan's focused. Folks, look out. I think they're ready to play tonight on the road. Maybe a road show for the Fab Five. We'll soon find out as the Wolverines and the Buckeyes get with it on Big Tuesday. From the blacktops today outside the St. John Arena, record high temperatures, 66 degrees. They were warming it up on the blacktop, and it's certain to heat up inside at the St. John Arena here in Columbus, Ohio. Tim Brando, Larry Conley, happy to have you with us for game one of Big Tuesday. And our McDonald's starting lineup for the Wolverines of Michigan. We highlight who else? Chris Weber, the freshman from the Motor City. And really, Tim, the only player to start every game for Michigan this year. He leads them in rebounding, block shots, and steals. He is truly a complete player. Imagine how Bo Schembechler would have felt had he gotten a national title after only six games. That man did. Steve Fisher, now the head man, three full seasons now with the Wolverines. For the Buckeyes, Chris Gent we highlight because Here's a player that's manufactured himself into a top flight Big Ten talent. The second of a pair of Chris's we're highlighting tonight, Ohio State's all-time leader in trays. The king of floor burns is playing the best basketball of his career. The young man, only 35 years of age, that is proving around the country that you can be young and have a well-disciplined team and make runs at Big Ten titles. We may be watching history in the making. He could be the Fred Taylor three decades later for basketball in this state. And you see the series history. In football, the maize and blue lead, but in basketball, the scarlet and gray, because of the Fred Taylor era, they have the lead at 73 to 56. Our officials tonight, Ted Hillary, Eric Harmon, and Randy Drury, and they're breaking out some new strides for tonight's game, all in gray. So, Tim, what do you think about those shoes? I think they look like mountain climbers. Mountain climbers? Yeah. Means they got a tall mountain to climb, right? <laughs> to try to get a number one seed past Bob Knight's Hoosiers. Very important now to, to realize that it's Ohio State's game to win here. They're at home. They play, they're playing Michigan. The press is strong. If Michigan can beat it, stay in this game in the first five minutes, I think they've got a legitimate shot to win a big game on the road tonight. Randy Ayers is very scared of this team. This is the type of team, Michigan, that can play with abandon. No one expects them to win, even though they have five of the most talented young players in the country. And they left two of those freshmen out of that starting lineup. Two guys who've been starting a lot, and that's Jimmy King and Ray Jackson. He went with more experience here tonight on the road. Michael Talley and James Bosco. Talley operating, finds Weber along the block. Jawan Howard tips it. Too strong off the iron. Jimmy Jackson clears. Michigan's going to open up in a man-to-man -man off defense. Jackson tries to go inside. Gents' outside shooting has been outstanding in recent games, and he's developed a jump hook that may be worth watching. This time he drives the baseline, and a turnover. Jalen Rose on the loose with a three on two. Kicks it out to Bosco. Howard tips it through. 
And you know what? That's the second time Howard's been on the offensive glass. He missed one earlier when Weber followed up. That time he got one. Howard's turning off very strong inside. There's the high lob to Funderburg. His favorite position is that baseline area. Boys, he made a difference in this basketball team. They are so much more athletic, much quicker with him in the lineup. Starting only his sixth game as a Buckeye. Oh, a nice dump down to Jackson. Ricochets through to Brown, the iron unkind, or it would have counted. Well, we got to that one early tonight. <laughs> Whoa. Told you I was pumped for this game. <laughs> Foul against Bosco. Take a look at it again on the inside. Now watch the good pass. That's the catch. Now watch him. Watch the basketball. Roll around and around and out. That, that happens to the visiting team. That doesn't happen to the home team. Now you were a shooter back in the Commonwealth with Rupp's runs. These are tight rims. People think that it's a myth when we say that, but the iron sometimes really can be on a guy. Well, it really is. I mean, when, depending on how tightly you really turn that screw, these rims can be very tight or loose. You know, if you got a club that likes to shoot a lot from the outside, you want to loosen those rims up a little bit. Jim takes a look, makes sure his defense is set before he gives him the ball. That's a good move. Michigan being very patient on the offensive end. Ohio State with good pressure out top. Jim's got power. Baker's defensive rows will be well worth watching, and a foul off the ball. A block. I think he got Bosco inside. Yeah, he did. Call with a push. Second team foul. And the second against him. 2-2, just underway. 90 seconds gone from St. John Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Yet another foul off the ball. This time, Jamal Brown. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They really have uh, gotten this game under control quickly, haven't they? Ball away from the, the ball. Fouls. Two already, back-to-back. In a Big Ten that is known for its physical play. I'll state again with that pressure. Ohio State's perimeter defense stretching him out. Weber in the lane. There's the dump down to an athletic Rose who saves it out of bounds off of Jamal Brown. Tim, I don't think that was such a good move. Weber had a good open shot coming across the lane, and I think that's what Steve Fisher just told him. He said, look, take that shot. Don't try to make a pass down inside on the baseline. Rose had nowhere to go even after he caught it. Juan Howard backing in on Thunderbird. Weber. And he draws the foul from Jamal Brown. Oh, Michigan doing a terrific job on the offensive glass. We play two minutes of basketball. They've already got four offensive rebounds, and it's Howard and Weber really going inside strong. This game that was played a month ago back at Chrysler Arena was extremely ugly. Michigan with 18 turnovers and only 13 points in the game. Steve Fisher credited the Michigan defense, or the Ohio State defense, and the immaturity on his club. And he had started for a couple of consecutive games, the five, Fab Five, but with Tally in the game and perhaps a little more of Riley during the course of this game, they hope to stem that tide. As you see, Robinson, Bill Robinson, number 54 in gray, coming in for Jamal Brown, who picked up a couple of quick fouls. Weber did an interesting thing there after he missed the free throw. He walked up to that broken line at the top of the bottom of the circle. And reached down and touched his toes. Didn't do any good. He missed the second one, too. Somewhat of a slow start to this basketball game. Neither club really pushing it up and down the floor. I think it's almost like two boxers kind of feeling their way. Jackson works over Jackson. And it's taken away by the Wolverines, but they turn it right back over to Baker. Into JJ. That'll get them started. Jimmy Jackson's first hoop, Buckeyes by two. And a violation. Turning, yeah. That's exactly what Fisher was worried about and just what you mentioned at the outset of the show. Well, Michigan fortunate to this point because Ohio State really has not taken advantage. Steve Fisher, 14 and 14 a year ago with a loss in the NIT and a rebuilding year. The best building was during the recruiting season. Jackson falling away. It's a four-point trip for the Buckeyes. Yeah, tell me a better player than 6'6 six, six in this country. There aren't any. I'll answer for you. Michigan 
being very patient on the offensive end. What's the ball moving around the perimeter? Weber with a cut. Jackson with a good cut up top. Ray Jackson dumps it down to Howard. Overpassing. Weber again to Howard. Count the basket. Goal tending against Lawrence Funderburg. But you're right. They passed up a couple of shots that time. Tim, not only that, they made three passes all within about five feet of each other. Here's the end pass right here. Howard's going to go up and watch the goaltending call. It's a good one. Ball's coming down. Pretty good move by Funderburg to get up, though. Michigan with a little press of their own now. Tally and Weber with a good pressure inside. Baker, who's improved this game dramatically, to perhaps the most improved player in the Big Ten, Chris Gent. I tell you, Gent and Baker are two guys that have played extremely well the last few games, particularly Baker. Punch and assist. What a great dish in the right corner, and Jim nailed it. Eight to four, I score. Ohio State. Again, a foul off the ball. Jimmy Jackson got caught that time against Jawan Howard. That's our third one. Third well, they off got, the ball foul. Yeah, they got Gent rather than Jackson. Really could have been either one. Gent's first foul. Ray Jackson looks down low, out of bounds. Last touch by the Wolverines. <laughs> Michigan propensity for turnovers coming out here in the first couple of minutes. Trying to hang on to that first time out. Well, as you mentioned earlier, they had the same problem when they played up in Ann Arbor. 18 turnovers in the first half. Gent penetrates, rejected by Howard. A four-on-one. Rose. Oh, to Ray Jackson. Oh, that's the way you like to run the break. And the way to finish it. Eight to six, Buckeyes. Good no call. Baker, solo. Oh, Tim, he is doing such a great job of penetrating and getting the ball to the open man. And when he has to, he's got the shot, and he's sticking it. Ohio State by four, 15 and a half remaining. About 18 points and five assists in his last four games. Mark Bacon. <laughs> Rose. Jackson follows. Oh, Ray Jackson's come in and made it. Robinson. Good job on Michigan that time. Shut it down. Baker tried to penetrate. Watch the double screen out top. Good trap by Michigan. And a steal by Ray Jackson to Weber for a little showtime. Oh, it was showtime. Oh, 360. 360. It's March, and I had to wait till this time to see a 360. The Wolverines creating some offense with their defense, and Jackson hits a tray. You know what? I'll take that one over the 360. It gives me one more point. Good work inside by Thunderbird to shut Weber down. He's really denying the basketball in there. Howard, too strong. Cleared by Funderburg. Now the Buckeyes with a three on two. Baker to Jet. Oh, the roll is good. Oh, well, we've seen some outstanding end to end play off turnovers from both teams. Baker's playing Houdini tonight. He is delivering that rock. Ohio State. Six out of six so far from the floor. Jalen Rose throws up a brick, but Ray Jackson follows. And they're having some success on the offensive boards. Doing a great job on the inside. Howard was doing it early, and now Jackson contributes. 15 to 12. One thing Ohio State has not done well is blocked Michigan off of that offensive backboard. 
Here's the 1-4 alignment now by Ohio State. They'll try to pop somebody out and immediately look to the inside. Thunderbolt. Well, after a number of fouls, we've played three minutes beyond the first TV timeout zone, and we haven't had a foul call. The nice offense, lob. Yeah, the offenses are really picking up. Robinson saved that one to Jimmy Jackson. Oh, what a nice pass. Thunderbird not ready. Robinson is. And we've got a foul inside. Steve Fisher wanted to travel prior to the foul. He may have had a point. Well, you make the decision. It's going to come right at you. Here he comes. I don't know. Uh, huh? <laughs> the foul occurred. I don't know if he did or not. So what if he's seven feet, 255? Let's give, give him credit when he makes a good play. See, what I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him the lane when he's coming down that hard. <laughs> yeah. Robinson, 61% at the stripe this year. He's had to make an adjustment with Lawrence Funderburk in the lineup. He had been starting. He's had to come in off the bench. This is the same barber as Chris Jen, I think. <laughs> 15 to 12, Ohio State leading Michigan. 12, 20 and counting into the first half. Fast moving game. Look how far Ohio State brings that defense. They really pull it out. That should open it up a little bit on the inside. There's the dump down to Jawan Howard. Riley may have been guilty of interference in the cylinder. Randy Drury will wave it off. Ohio State has the lead by three, but in what is an Olympic year, if you're giving extra points, not only for technical merit, but also artistic impression, you'd give them to the Wolverines on this play. I want to tell you what, I'd give him a 10 plus on this one. Look at this, folks. Whoa. Wrong. And it's only the beginning from Columbus. 15 to 12, Ohio State up on Michigan. Let's take a look at the way Michigan runs their fast break. Now watch the block. As Jim goes up, the ball is going to come back out. I want you to notice something. Now look what's All right, here they go. Now you've got four guys, one here, one here, one here, and one handler. Watch how they fan out and fill the lane. See how they spread? The ball goes to the left side, Rose kicks it back in, and there's Weber. That's the way you run the break. We've seen so far both teams' ability on the defensive end, Larry, come to the forefront. More of the turnovers in the backcourt for Michigan, but the Ohio State turnovers coming in the front court. Well, one of the things I like tonight especially is Michigan coming out in full court pressing away from home. I think that's a very positive move by Steve Fisher. These young guys want to play. And they want to run and play the 94-foot game. Each team with five turnovers. And there's that left-handed hook I talked about earlier. He's always had it, but he's been using it more in recent games. And Ohio State pushing that defense out top. Really can handle it. Oh. Riley follows and a foul against Robinson. You're talking about fundamentals and blockout. Ohio State's having their problems with it. Tim, in the first eight plus minutes that we played here in Columbus, really the offensive rebound, as you can see right there, with Michigan leading six to nothing. If they continue to hammer the glass like this, they're going to get all kinds of points in there. And Ohio State, as you said, not doing a very good job of keeping the Wolverines off of that backboard. Eric Riley out of St. Joseph's High School in Cleveland. Chris Weber coming back into the game. Well, we touched on it earlier. Eric Riley, the high school teammates of Elvis Gerback and Desmond Howard. 17-13, Buckeyes by four. Weber with a good job, good reach around to get it away from Dudley. 
Ricky Dudley, number 40 in gray, coming in for the first down. Robinson clears for Ohio State. Brown appreciates it, too. Did it with authority. Baker finds Dudley. Rejected, but he does draw the foul inside. Riley picking it up. If you take the ball to the inside, you've got to make sure you've got an outlet for your pass. Watch him make the kick to the right. That's a beautiful pass right there and a good pump fake. Riley right there to commit the foul. Weber was on the backside. It was a nice play by Dudley. You know, oftentimes I see a lot of point guards take that ball down inside, get airborne, or perhaps get into get themselves in a position where they don't have anybody to dish to. That time Baker found somebody, and Dudley was the welcome recipient. Out of Henderson, Texas. Well, you take a look at the state of Texas in the Big Ten, you'll find a few. One of the Fab Five from that state. Wolverines have one as well. Tuesday out of the Big Ten, Tim Brando, Larry Conley, happy to be with you. The Buckeyes with a six-point lead. And coming up, immediately following our game, on to the Southeastern Conference, LSU and Arkansas. Battle for supremacy in the Southeastern Conference's Western Division. Arkansas and LSU, the winner of that game, figures to wind up a co-champion along with Kentucky out of the SEC's East who is destined to finish with a three loss record in that league as well. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale will have that one for you. As far as say Michigan's done a pretty good job of handling Ohio State's full court pressure. Once they get into the half court game they've been pretty successful getting the ball on the inside. Jackson on Jalen along the perimeter. Ray Jackson has come in to be the leading scorer to this point for the Wolverine. A tough down to Riley. Look at the work on the offensive glass. And another member of the Fab Five, Jimmy King out of Plano, Texas, knocks it down. Hey, the two Texas guys from Michigan are playing pretty well, aren't they? They really are. Good screen by Jen. A good pick up the time by Rose. Baker penetrates. Looked for Dudley, but Ray Jackson stepped in with the help defense. Tim, that's the point I was trying to make earlier. Baker got himself in a position where he had nowhere to go with the basketball. No recipient. Nice pass. Rose to Riley. Jalen Rose has really carried this club this year. He and Weber have been the leading scorer all year long except for one game. Howard against Indiana. Ohio State by two, 19-17. Well, Ohio State runs that stack offense down underneath where they put two guys on either side of the lane, and Baker just tries to find somebody on the pop-out. Jackson negotiates. Oh, oh the foul. Count it. Fisher wanted it walking again. He's lobbying. Now he's an All-American in the Big Ten Player of the Year. I don't think he'll win this argument. Robinson with a good kick pass out. Now look by, look at the move by Jackson. See Robinson clear out? That was a smart move by Robinson to really clear the area to give him a chance to work. Good move, and Riley commits the foul. Just a tremendous jump stop while piercing through the defenders. And you see Chris Kent taking a seat. Jackson four for four from the floor. You see that leading the Big Ten in scoring, and yet he's an unselfish player. He could average 27, 28 game, uh, points a game if he, if he really wanted to. He's one of those guys that I call quiet leader. He just does his job. He goes out to shows people how he can perform. Jackson takes it right away from Jalen Rose. Got a foul up at the top of the key. They were not going to allow Jimmy Jackson the freebie that time. Ray Jackson picks up the foul. Hey, take a look right here. You're going to see the defense. Now, now, look at the way Ohio State is set in here. Right here. Michigan's got the basketball. Now, once it hits that wing and they come across, watch the movement. He turns. He looks. He can go nowhere. And a good steal by Jackson. I'll tell you what, they're really collapsing well down inside on the paint. It's very difficult to get the ball inside. Well, Steve Fisher finally got the traveling call he had been waiting so long to get. 
That's why you keep working them. And again, there comes Ohio State back with the pressure. King doing a good job of handling the ball against Davis. One thing about this pressure by Ohio State is you don't always look for the steal. You just want to maintain the pressure. Jackson feeds Riley for a slam. Put dump down the inside. What happened that time was Funderburk went to help, and when he did, Riley made the move down inside. The Buckeyes have eight field goals and eight turnovers in the game. They're shooting at a torrid pace, but they, too, are guilty of turning it over. Like this. Jimmy King does the trick. I'll say one thing. Michigan takes some good high-percentage shots. <laughs> They're all around the top of that rim. Good defense by the Wolverines, and they've tied it. Steve Fisher's club and this young team has done an outstanding job of taking the crowd right out of St. John Arena at this point. Good double team that time by Michigan again. Right on Jackson and Jutak. Alex Davis from the perimeter, but Dudley brings it down. We get on with Jamie Skelton in the game for the first time. Number 15 in gray. Davis turns it over. The trailer is Weber, nice. who feeds Jackson. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a nice play. Oh, they are fabulous. This is textbook. Tim, watch it again. Now, here's the way you run the fast break. Rose looks, doesn't have anybody. Weber's got it, says, no, I'm going to give it to my man inside. That was a terrific pass by Chris Weber. In January, Larry, do you think Weber may have taken it to the hoop and picked up the charge? Very possibly, yes. But that time he had Ray Jackson wide open on the baseline. And Weber looked up, and again, credit Rose with handling the ball in the open court. Oh, look at King with a tip in. Oh. <laughs> Ohio State going to sleep down low on the defensive end just do not expect that. Randy here is very upset. Howard doing a nice job on Hall out front. Jamie Skelton off the front rim, and Weber with the baseball pass to Rose. I see there's another move by the freshman. He brought it back out instead of really taking it inside and forcing the issue. Now they're going to run their half-court game. Look at this run. In the last 3.15, they've outscored the Buckeyes by 10, but the Wolverines turn it over this time. Randy Ayers had reason to be scared. The Wolverines are here to stay tonight. King first half, Tim Brando, Larry Conley. Big Tuesday in the Big Ten. And the student section on their feet a little antsy because their fifth-ranked Buckeyes have appeared sluggish, particularly on the defensive end, while Jimmy Jackson is doing his best to keep his team in it offensively. Taking over earlier than usual tonight. Oh, look at that second effort. Look at that effort. Oh, J.J. counted and a foul at halftime you're going to see that without jackson the wolverines would be blowing the buckeyes out of here Tim, i'm, I'm going to tell you something i'm ready to give him the crown for the second effort but the third one was more impressive Jim with a good move jackson has nowhere to go comes out turns shoots a little jump up now watch him go back and get his own shot yeah that's impressive but watch this this is even more impressive taking it back on the other side that's a great play. you mentioned that he's so unselfish. This is his kind of player. Randy Ayers is a quiet leader himself. 25-24. Wolverines by one. Nice facing the pass, but it was lost in midair by Freddie Hunter. Weber again with a good pass, and Hunter couldn't control. Michigan doing a good job with their hands on the inside. Very difficult to make a pass without it being deflected. Hunter in the game for the first time. Number 31 in the Maiden Blue. First ever walk-on team captain in Michigan history. Again, not there. Javon Howard clears. He just simply went up and took that ball away from Steve Hall. Went up over the top of him. Jawan's fourth rebound of the game. They are dominating the board, these Wolverines. Michigan in December. I'm going to tell you what, this is a much more disciplined club than what I saw in December. They're playing well. Jimmy King coming to the game off the bench has eight points. 
He only played nine minutes against Wisconsin, was invisible, and didn't play the rest of the game. Started, played nine minutes, and then sat the rest of the way in Madison. And Jimmy King picks up the foul prior to the shot. That's what will happen from time to time, and it's a tough read for Steve Fisher as a head coach when you've got these young guys. You'd like to let them play, but at times you have to send messages, and that's what he did with Jimmy King. Well, I think oftentimes when you look up and you see that you've got all of these young players out there to put on the floor, you've got to look at the talent, but you've also got to look at who you're playing. For example, tonight, I think it was smart for him to go in there with a more experienced lineup on the road. I would not have brought those five freshmen in here and started them in a very hostile arena. The free throw line is aiding the Buckeyes in this game as well, along with Jimmy Jackson, his individual play. Callie back in the game at the point. Weber, bad shot. That's a poor shot. He threw that one up. Jackson, a one-on-one -on -one isolation move. And a foul going up the back. Steve Hall that time, number 42 in gray. Well, don't forget, coming up ACC Big East Wednesday. The Q's taking on Connecticut. Boy, they're an enigma this year. Georgia Tech to take on North Carolina and the Tar Heels for the first time since the mid-60s have lost four in a row. This is a comeback game for them as they take on Bobby Crimmins' team. Jimmy Jackson will take a seat for the first time. All of that, by the way, coming up tomorrow. The hits just keep on coming in the month of March on ESPN. My favorite time of the year. What a great month. Whole country gets involved in hoops. King with the bounce pass to Jawan Howard. Weber will follow again, dominating inside Michigan. Yeah, there are two things that Michigan has done well in this first half. One is they've gotten the ball inside, and they've gotten it in there fairly easily. The other thing has been their offensive rebounding. That's the reason they've got that five-point lead right now. Well, the eyes of Texas must be on Jimmy King and Ray Jackson because they have given the Wolverines 16 of their 29 points. Tom Brandewey coming into the game, the junior from Fort Laramie, Ohio, and Steve Hall will sit down. Look at that. On the boards, Michigan by a landslide. Well, Funderburg has really been quiet this evening. Not heard much out of him. On the wing, it won't go for Jamal Brown, and the Buckeyes get a rare offensive rebound. And it was Jim that got in there to get it. Funderburg who has not gotten on track tonight. Let Michigan back that ball out and take a look inside. Both big guys extremely active. Both Howard and Weber, inside and out. Weber popped out. Too strong this time. Too ugly chucks by. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the first time, well, the second time in this first half that we've seen Weber throw up two shots, two bad ones. With a good block there. Whoa. That's why you gotta let him play. King with the dump down. Overpassing. Overpassing. Jet on the other end to Brown, the trailer. Boy, did Jet make a great pass. A little drop off at the hip. Wolverines by three with just over three minutes remaining until halftime. Fans trying to get into it now. Michigan's pretty well taking them out of it. Tally for three. Kent clears. Baker with a three on two outlet to Thunderbird. Great break. His first deuce, and here come the Buckeyes. Another steal. St. John could come down. Jamal Brown can't save it. 231 remaining, and the Wolverines survive this particular wave. As the Buckeyes with a 6-0 run cut it to one. Oh. Ohio State with a 6-0 run keyed by some defensive board work from Chris Jen. Yeah, Tim, if you're going to get your fast break going, you've got to go up and get the boards and you've got to have an outlet pass. Look at this move right here. Look at Chris Gent right there. That's the good rebound to get it started. His next one is the outlet pass. He hits Baker right at midcourt. Now look at the movement. Look at the spread right here. Look at this. You see the spread? He's got a man here. He's got a man on the wing. He makes the bounce pass here, and this is what happens. This is the way you run the break. You get the ball out, and you lay it up and in, and Thunderbird 
is the man who lays it in. Good work by Ohio State. Chris Gent, a workman from Sparta, New Jersey. They'd be proud of him in that state. He plays like a blue-collar guy. You know what? This is a good point. <laughs> You're not bad with it. <laughs> Brown, not there. Cleared by Rowe. He and Baker have to become a bigger factor along the perimeter for Ohio State. In the last three possessions, I think Michigan has gone back to the way they were playing in December. They were very impatient, took a couple of bad shots. Now they go back inside. The timeout, Fisher got to them, said get the ball inside. Steve Fisher applauding Chris Weber, not getting down on him after two really bad shots. Give him some confidence. Keep going to it. Weber now has six in the game. Well, we got a great matchup with Thunderbird and Weber. Good double team by King. Boy, that ball goes inside. Is it the King or Rose that goes down and doubles up? You notice that you don't see as much movement from Thunderbird as you would from Weber down low? Look at Jen. Good move inside. Lawrence. Gets the roll. I thought those rims were tight. Not to the home team. 31-30. Now again, if Michigan wants to get thrive with their offense, they've got to go back to the inside. I think that's where their strength is. Weber, he was fouled a push by Gent right on Connolly's call. And Chris Gent picks up his second. Tim, I think it's fairly obvious Steve Fisher had a chance to talk to his club. He said, look, we want the ball down in low. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders to bring you up to date on all that's going on in college basketball. He'll have highlights and scores from other games. He'll go around the rim, show you Boston College against Pitt. D.C. is hopeful as a bubble team in the Big East, and so too is Pitt. That's a very big game for both of those clubs who have double-digit losses. You got to figure on a number of teams with double digit losses will make the NCAA party this year. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you what, to borrow one of your words, I know you're famous for borrowing people's words. I'll take <laughs> one of yours. You know, I think the Big East is an enigma, not just the team, a team, but I think the whole league is. And they're so balanced. And you consider St. John's as Jackson gets the tip, Ray Jackson again. St. John's clinches the Big East after falling out of the top 25. That's hard to figure. In the offensive board work by Michigan. Gary Jackson falling away at baseline. Where would Ohio State be in this first half if it weren't for J.J.? <laughs> Interesting to let Howard handle the ball out top with Thunderbird. The two centers out top. Then they move him inside. Well, the high-low passing has been outstanding, and Weber finds Rose this time. Yeah, but they went low, high, low. Howard, Weber, Rose. Oh, that is terrific pass. Just a simple triangle and great spacing. Maybe. Freshmen are rapidly turning into seasoned sophomores here in the month of March. I think once you hit March, if you've had a lot of playing time, I think you ought to be considered more than a freshman. Good trap by Michigan. Ooh, good job by Baker to avoid it. Inside the chin. The finger roll won't go. King at the buzzer. If you were right, this is their number one road show in the Big Ten to this point. Michigan playing very well so far. Randy Ayers anxious to get to the locker room to discuss it. A four-point lead for the Wolverines. And Wolverines, and the Wolverines are warming it up inside the St. John Arena. Hello again, everyone. Tim Brando along with Larry Conley. They've done it inside. They've done it outside. And the Fab Five has indeed matured. And they really have, but they've, doing, they've done it more on the inside than the outside. Take a look right here. I want to show you something. Watch the movement here in the pass down inside. Howard's there. You're going to see him catch it. The ball's going to come right back out, right here to Weber. Then Weber's going to kick it back inside to Jalen Rose. That's the way the ball will move. Now, once it comes in, watch the kick pass out. Howard inside. Weber steps back out. Then he looks for Jalen Rose. And Chris just saying, wait a minute, where is he? There he is and he's got the ball and laying it in. That is excellent interior passing by Michigan. The Buckeyes are shooting well, but they're getting killed on the boards on the offensive rebounding 
by Michigan. Look at that, 11 to three, and the second chance points coming from the board domination. That's the key to this game to this point. Okay, another thing that helped too, Michigan cut those turnovers down substantially from that first game. Imagine, they started this game eight of nine from the floor in the first 10 minutes, then five of 15 in the last 10 minutes, and Jimmy Jackson had to step it up a little earlier than usual. He normally comes on strong with point production in the second half. Without his 14, Michigan would be up by a double-digit margin. And the other thing is, we have not heard much from Lawrence Funderburg in the first half, so we'll see what happens and develops here in the second. Great Jackson and Jimmy King have played the best half of their season so far. Oh, Michigan is just dominating that backboard. Well, that was a near unforced error by Talley. Almost lost it up there. Now will they go back inside? Rose, a little hang time, and he drains it. He got a shot over Jamal Brown that time. A size disadvantage right there. Brown only 6'4", Rose goes 6'7". 38 to 32, and here's Jenny. Thunderbird keeps it alive and is rejected by Weber. What a great block by Weber. Oh. Oh, good steal by Baker, huh? And Rose does the trick again. Tally beats Jalen. Oh. It won't drop, and Weber's there to knock it through. Tim, what a great start for the Wolverines to come out and get the first two baskets of the second half. Remember, they only had 13 points at halftime in the game at Chrysler Arena a month ago and 18 turnovers. Far different story tonight. And Gent again with the left-handed jump hook. You know, if Ohio State's got a chance to win this game, they better get some offense from other people other than Jackson and Gent. Somebody's going to have to step up and do something. So far, it's been those two guys. That pair has really carried the offense for the Buckeyes. Defense! 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 There's the high lob Defense! for Weber. What a great pass out. Couldn't make it. Rose comes up empty from three-point land. Ohio State needs to make something happen now. They want to come out and reestablish themselves in the second half. Baker. Nice jump stop on the blocks. Well, that's the guy who's been the hottest for this Ohio State team recently. He's been the leading scorer in two of their last four games. Maybe he's the third guy that's going to step up and contribute something offensively. In the age of the three-point shot, Michigan 0 for 7 tonight, but they haven't needed the long-range bombs because they've been able to go inside and be effective like that. Howard took a step. Funderburg's defense needs to be credited that time. Yeah, Funderburg right there to throw it back out. Well, he's got to have positive reinforcement for these young guys whenever they make a mistake. I think the job that Steve Fisher has had this year has been one of the most difficult in coaching because you recruit the stars, the pressure's on, the media comes out and says, hey, they're not as good as expected, and he's got to keep them motivated. Well, I think even more than that, how about your veterans? Oh. you got to keep them happy, too. Jalen Rose decides to drive this time. Not there. Cleared by Jimmy Jackson. Ball reversal that time by Ohio State. Baker working on talent. Well, it goes right in Jackson's face, didn't he? Baker. Inside the three-point arc off the feed from J.J. And Mark Baker has six, the senior from Dayton. And they bring out the press this time. Those six unanswered now for the Buckeyes. They've cut it to two. I think maybe those first two baskets Michigan got really in a wake-up call. Foul off the ball again. Funderburg may have picked it up against Chris Weber. 31 games, 24 conference championships all in one week. Actually, it's 33 games. It all begins Saturday. The Big South Conference Championship. And we head into Sunday. Our first opportunity with Championship Week will be the Sun Belt Conference title game down in Biloxi, Mississippi. went through a big change, didn't it? Oh. With the old American South and merged with the four remaining teams in the Sun Belt. Weber keeping it alive again to Riley. I want to tell you what, Michigan is doing such a great job of moving the ball on the interior. 
in that paint, they're just they're dropping the ball off the teammates. Like, Jim, it's, it's the best I've seen all year. I haven't seen a team pass this well on, on the interior all year. Got an overrule this time. Randy Ayers wins that argument and will trigger it in from underneath their own hoop. Jimmy Skelton has come into the game. Jimmy Jackson can't buy it. Dudley on the glass draws the foul. Riley can't believe it. Well, when you get in position, you're going to get a lot of rebounds. Watch again on the miss by Jackson. The ball caroms long. There are a lot of Michigan players there, but a good catch down inside. And that's what you got to do. You got to stick it back in. Dudley right there to grab it. Hey, they need somebody on that backboard because Michigan is really pounding them on the glass. Jet coming back into the game and. Jimmy Jackson will take a quick seat. This is an opportunity for him to get a quick blow with one second remaining until we reach the TV timeout zone. The way Randy Ayers gets an extra blow for the superstar that has to be there for the bulk of the remaining 20 minutes of this game. It's amazing. I mean, Michigan's lead, leading this game by three points. The state is stronger than Nets in the first half. Jalen Rose holds up, waits for James Bosco and Tally to run the point. And that particular move would not have occurred in that first match in Ann Arbor. Good move by Rose to pull it back out. Now they'll try to go back inside. Tally uses his quickness past Jen. Now some of the loose balls going to the Buckeyes. They rarely got them in the first half. Baker. Oh, the good Marcus Haynes act by Baker. He draws the foul from Tally. Oh, oh, nice work by Baker. He put together about eight moves before that ball went up to the basket. Mark Baker. How'd you like to try to guard this guy? Uh uh. No, thank you. Look at this. Left, right, between the legs. Lost it on the hip a little bit. Got it back. Between the legs again. Went around box down on the corner of the baseline and drew the foul from Tally. Oh, that is a great move. We mentioned earlier how Jimmy Jackson will come outside and take over on the perimeter. He's so versatile, he has to do that. It takes a, a man with very little ego to run the point to allow that to happen. Mark Baker adjusts to the game as well as any point guard. He may be the best, complete, most complete point guard in this league, and yet late in games, they let Jackson bring it up and take control. Yeah, Jim, I think oftentimes we mislabel point guards. I think what we expect of them is simply distribution of the basketball for points. It's important that you have a point guard who can score, and this guy can score. Wolverines by one. They're led by four at halftime. Again, the Buckeyes push that defense out. Good pressure. Rose. It won't fall. Thunderbird lost it. Out of bounds to Ohio State. Randy Ayers' his club down one. That'll be for Big Tuesday in the Big Ten. And the passing inside continues for Michigan. And again, it's Weber who's leading the way. Here's a block shot by Funderburg, but they come up with this loose ball. Now watch Weber move in position to grab the ball on a nice push off. <laughs> Got it across the lane. Riley moves inside, and he drops the ball inside to him. Well, Weber doing a nice job of delivering the basketball. Now, the other thing that the big fellas are doing, Larry, is they're keeping the ball high once they receive it. Earlier, back in January, they bring it down, make themselves small. That's not happening anymore. Weber has three assists in the game, but you see the Buckeyes on a 9-2 spurt in the last 3.30, and they've been getting some loose balls here in the second half. a chance now to pick up the lead, too, which they haven't seen for a while. Watch the screen for Baker. Double down by Weber. Kick out the oh, yeah. That's sweet. That's the way you do it. Jimmy Jackson with 16. He'll have to get well above his average tonight for the Buckeyes to win. Rose comes back to help as Weber triggered it in. Randy Ayers wants Dudley to put more pressure on the ball. A little upset with his defense that time. Miles State with the lead. Weber. Oh. Get it to drop. Oh, Dudley. Whoa, in the air. Oh, 
Jackson working off the ball against Ray Jackson. Yeah. Not a bad idea either. Yeah, I'd say Jackson had him beat going across that lane, and there was nobody to help him. So he reached out and got him on the arm. Randy Ayers wanted a, an intentional foul. Take a look again. Now, watch the move by Jackson. Then on the backside, look at him grab the arm right there. I think it's a pretty good move on the part of Ray Jackson. Thunderbird works over Riley, draws the foul from Eric. You get the feeling that Ohio State just hasn't learned how to play with Lawrence to this point. It's just taking some time for them, both for he to acclimate to them and, and vice versa. Riley has, chance, has four fouls. He had a chance to visit. Ooh, that's, a, that's a big one, that fourth foul. Biggest player Michigan has. I thought it was Steve Snap, who's the SID here at Ohio State prior to the game, and I was asking him how far he could fit into this club. And I said, you know, you sit out that period of time, and oftentimes you need somebody on your club that welcomes him. And he said Jimmy Jackson was the guy that really brought him into the fold and kind of made him welcome with the other players. So sort of the mentor, if you will, of Lawrence Funderburg. Riley sits down as Weber is checked back in. 6.6 rebounds for Lawrence Funderburg as he becomes more active. And now we've got a conversation now. Oh, I think they're saying it was an illegal, an illegal substitution made when they got Weber in the game for Riley. Did you have a boy or not? Gotta switch him back. Yeah, it, it, that's what the conversation is yeah. about now. The explanation's being given. That's uh, Eric Harmon talking with Steve Fisher. Now Randy Ayers gets involved. Remember, anytime there's a correctable error, they can take over. Listen in. involved now is he has to make the substitution he's got to go back in well Fisher is really upset find out what this is about I'll, I'll tell you what it is it all involves a substitution at the free throw line well the key is did Weber or Howard come in I think that's what the controversy is about and I think Fisher's trying to say wait a minute Howard was in I got Weber in to replace Riley and they're saying no that was during a dead ball that's correct it wasn't that wasn't a free throw situation well they're gonna leave it alone anyway <laughs> Play by play sheet, they write those up as a duo. <laughs> 13 55 remaining. Ohio State with its first lead since the 10 minute mark of the first half. And Riley, or check that, Howard draws the foul inside. The strength all night has been the inside game for Michigan. The Wolverines have pounded the ball down inside, and it's been Howard who's been the guy that's received most of these passes. You know what? He could have been called for an offensive foul right there with a turn in to Dudley. Dudley picks up the foul. Seven rebounds for Jawan. He's done the job on the glass. Freshman out of Chi-Town. All the three games center this year. Oh, Funderburg may have gotten away with one in the cylinder. You know what? That ball might have been sitting right on the edge of that rim. Buckeyes by two. Kent at the three-point arc. Funderburg trying to keep it alive. A Weber clears it as Lawrence hits the deck. 
seven rebounds for Chris Weber. Back to the inside. Howard wants it. Nice pass to Rose. How about that interior passing? Is it terrific for Michigan tonight? In game two tonight, look for Shaquille O'Neal to make that pass to Vernell Singleton a few times. And Arkansas takes on LSU. We got a kick. Now the question is, can Singleton finish it off as well as Rose does? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Other scores in the Big East. Villanova, boy, they need some wins. A game under 500 taking on Providence tonight. Xavier with a little bit of a comeback there. And James Bosco will come into the game. Tied at 45. Almost seven minutes deep into the second half here in the Big Ten. Tim Brando, Larry Connolly, happy to have you with us. St. John Arena, Ohio State and Michigan. Bosco with a great block. Oh, good hand. Rose to Bosco. On both ends, James Bosco, and he gets his first two of the game. Michigan regains the lead by a duel. Now Weber with a pickpocket act. Oh, the finish to Rose, and it's a foul inside. Dudley picks it up. Dudley Two good defensive plays, Tim, by Michigan right there. One was a block, and the other one was a steal. And that time, Chris Weber, who leads this club in steals, which I think is ironic, as big as he is, watch him come back and get this. Here's the block by Bosco. Now watch the break start. Rose has got the ball right in the middle. He looks left, right, up in the air, drops it to Bosco, and he's there for the layup. That's the way you fill the lane. Now watch it again, back again. The second defensive gem by Michigan. This time it's going to be Chris Weber with a slap away. Right there, the pickup. Now again, watch the finish on this. Well, you don't see it, but it's the finish. They run the break again. They drop it to Rose, and he gets the foul and goes to the line for two. Here it is again. Now watch it again. Rose filling the lane on the right side, and instead of Weber taking it and drawing a charge, possibly, gives it up to Rose. Well, they're doing a terrific job of handling that break tonight, giving the ball up to the right guy. Look at the turnovers, you see. 14 tonight for Ohio State over their average. And believe me, Michigan's defense is responsible. Those are not unforced errors. On the other end, Baker takes the baseline and draws a foul from King. His second foul. Yeah, you know, oftentimes what hap happens on a clear out when you've got the offense running on the baseline, watch the clear out for Baker. Now, here comes the clear out. Now look at this. Down inside, you'll see Jackson. Now watch him go there. Now watch Baker come. See the clear out right there? He opened it up a little bit by getting Bosco pinned, and that allowed Baker to go on the baseline. That's just a little bit of help from your friend. I thought that was the point of emphasis from for officials this year when they back in using that derriere. Well, I'm not sure it was a back in. I think he just pretty well screened him off. I thought that was a legitimate play. Well, he is pretty strong. Yeah. You don't need to back in too very much if you're... Body by Jake like Jimmy Jackson. 49-47, Michigan by two. 12 and a half in counter. Now Weber's moved out on the wing. Michigan guards have a reach advantage. They are taller and they've utilized that greatly tonight looking down low Weber he comes out high and finds Howard and Jawan almost had that one nice pass from Weber Jackson for three <laughs> that's an all-american roll on the rim in his favorite place to play he But guys by one. JJ saves it right in front of Bosco. And look at that nice hesitation move. Draws a foul from Weber. I'll tell you what happened right there. JJ just simply schooled Bosco coming across that lane. Weber said something to Bosco. Says you got to keep up with him. He says, Yeah. Will you take him for a while? <laughs> Nice work, though, by Bosco. That was one of the cleanest blocks Jimmy Jackson's had against him all year. 
Got the one earlier. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Very good. Oh, what a night he's having. Where would Ohio State be tonight, for that matter, this year, without that young man? Joins a long list of Buckeye greats. Jerry Lucas, Herb Williams, Jim Clemens, Bill Hoskett, Larry Siegfried, and how about our own special K? 53-52, and this replay will summarize how frustrating it has been for a consummate team player like Chris Gent, who is normally great to watch off the ball. There used to be a guy who wore this same uniform many years ago who probably moved as well without the basketball as anybody that ever lived. His name was John Havlicek. Watch the movement right here, you young players. That's the way you get open. Good job by Michigan to reject that shot right there, but Chris Gent all over the floor. He's always active, get up, giving up his body, on the defensive end, and always setting screens to help his teammates. Good player. The shot clock is down to 20 after that timeout that was called relatively deep into the Ohio State possession. It doesn't Give take Baker long to launch it, and Weber clears. Most impressed with Weber's complete game tonight. He's done a terrific job defensively, rebounding, and passing. Wolverines led by as many as eight early in this half. Ohio State managed to get a three-point lead. Michigan has taken it back. Buckeyes have gone cold from the floor. Rose off the baseline. Boy, he must think there's a lid on the hoop. That one was rattling through and then out. Buckeyes getting a lot of breaks. The hang tough can only be down one. Funderburg pops out. Funderburg has been throttled tonight. And the baseball pass to Weber. Wow, what a terrific pass by Rose. Approximately 88 and a half feet. Weber right there to catch it and jam it. And Michigan is up by three. Ohio State needs to get something going right now. They don't let this Michigan team get too far up on them. Baker. Out there. Loose ball control to the Wolverine. King with Rose on his hip. Who finds King? Oh, that is so sweet. Michigan rolling to a five-point lead. The Buckeyes won for their last ten from the floor. Tim, you never know when those freshmen are going to rise up and play hard. Tonight, they have played terrific so far. 34 minutes of play. Now Rose has got the responsibility for guarding Jackson. Good screen by Dudley. The switch to Weber. Nice idea by Jackson, but it was touched by Riley. So it will be controlled to the Buckeyes. Jawan Howard will come back into the game. Jimmy Jackson trying to find some of his friends, getting nailed in the nose in so doing. Keep an eye on Ohio State's offense here. Sometimes when you get in this position, when the club has come into your own home court, starts running up a lead on you, you get a little panicky because you think you need to do things quickly. You've got to be patient with their offense and make sure they continue to get the good shots. Jen, well, he just keeps working on the blocks. He uses that patented jump hook with the left hand that really aided the Buckeyes in the road victory at East Lansing. That ended a five and a half minute scoring drought from the floor for Ohio State. Yet Michigan only up by three. Baker with a turnover. Moved by Baker. Hung in the air and got by King. Another turnover. Jet. Get through by Jackson. Ohio State after him now. 58-57. As they're trying to blow the roof off the St. John Arena. Thunder first with Thunder. Thunderbird. This is the third turnover in a row by Michigan, and it's given Ohio State the lead. He follows it up right here with a jam, and that forced Michigan to take a timeout to talk about it. 
Good defense by Ohio State. Prior to that, though, two unforced errors by the Michigan backcourt. Gent made them pay, and so did Mark Baker. And now Thunderbird is feeling the pinch. And now Tally's in the lineup to bring the ball up the floor. Key possession for the Wolverines, trailing by three. Howard, cleared by Jackson. How well this young group responds in the next two minutes to tell us something about how they'll play beyond the Big Ten season. What a play, down inside. Jamal oh. Brown. Brown had nowhere to go and threw up a prayer. After five minutes of being stone cold, now they've hit on 10 unanswered. And finally, Michigan answers. Down three. 420 and counting. Now that that run is out of their system, I'm going to be anxious to see how Michigan responds. Baker, face line, draws the foul from Tally. This is the time in a game, Larry, normally with Ohio State when Jimmy Jackson clearly takes over. He's had to do a lot of taking over earlier than usual as Jalen Rose comes back in and Jimmy King sits down. It's been Baker and Funderburg that have suddenly come alive in the last two minutes. Well, Jackson did it really in the first half. He had 14 in the first half, and they would have been nowhere without him. The second half, it's really been Baker, I think, that stepped his game up. I mean, he's only got nine points, but he's done a terrific job of handling the basketball. Jimmy Jackson just uh, throwing in his usual 23 points and 10 rebounds. Another in a long line of double-doubles for him. Well, he is the guy to have a crunch time, isn't he? Get him out there somewhere on that floor for you. He's one of those guys that can pick a team up and take them to the promised land, and he's very capable. Ricky Dudley, who's played significant minutes, comes into the game, and... Jamal Brown, who just made a tremendous play, will take a seat. 64-59, a five-point game with four minutes left. You'd think this is a mismatch with Jed out high on Taylor. A dump down to Weber. On the baseline, Rose keeping it alive. Oh, what a play by Galen, and Hunter tips it through. But credit Jalen Rose for keeping it alive. That time Michigan went back to what they had a lot of success with in the first half, and that was offensive rebounding. What they've got to do now is stop this Ohio State juggernaut. It is really rolling. Jet for three. Yeah. That is a Baker's dozen for Gent. 67-61. push Michigan out from underneath that paint. They're starting to body up a little bit and keep them away. Thunderbird and Howard really going to war. Thunderbird's going to get the call. I think that's been part of the problem Michigan's had with their offense the last couple of times, Tim. It's because Ohio State starting to muscle them out a little bit, getting them, getting them away from that paint. You're going to see a lot of action in the paint when the Big O meets the Shack. Arkansas, number seven with a bullet and with a chance at a top seed taking on LSU. Mayberry, Day, and company against Shaquille O'Neal. Don't be surprised if there's a little whooping in that game. Those teams like to talk and play. Anytime you go to Barnhill Arena, you're talking about a special play. Great atmosphere for college basketball. <laughs> so is this place. People love their basketball here in Columbus. I can tell you that. Michigan. Six of 14 from the free throw line, while Ohio State has hit on 16 of 21. Sometimes you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game and look at that particular statistic, and it spells the difference in a W or an L. Well, with this five-point lead, I would expect Ohio State to get a little bit more patient on offense. Michigan's going to have to turn that defense up and come after them. 
Hunter coming out to check down. Help that time by Rose. Baker. Yes, and a foul. Oh, that may be a knockout punch right there. Callie commits it while Baker is falling away. He knows it. Steve Fisher not very pleased with this call. Look at Callie. Make the move. Jackson with the penetration draws the defense and he kicks it to Baker. Right, right there, Tally went right underneath of him, committed the foul. Uh, that may have been a little play acting there. Tally knew he was in at the air and he did not want to make contact. You see Fisher getting him out of the game. I think Baker did a nice job of going to the deck. Yeah, Bosco coming in. I also think he got him. I was watching him play pretty closely and I think he bumped him pretty good when he went down. That's Tally saying, yeah, I made the mistake. Michigan played so well for so long and then the three turnovers at the 5-10 mark spell disaster at front Turn this game completely around. Two of them were unforced, and the other one, they just simply went out and put pressure on Michigan. That was Lawrence Funderburg that made the steal. Weber. Three possessions away to two possessions away. Down six with 2.14 left. Weber with 15 points. Well, how'd you like to try to stop Baker on the press? This guy can handle it so well. Oh, the ingredients are there for this team. There's no question. Jackson loses it. Oh, wait a minute. We may have a delayed call. Yeah, it's a no call. Nice work by Ted Hillary. For a moment, it appeared we may have a late call, but he... That's clearly a good no-call situation. Yeah, the ball just simply flew out of his hand right here, you'll see. Yeah, it, was just, it just came out of his hand. Fans believe that J.J. is so good, he's got to get the benefit of the doubt. This one's still in doubt with 157 left. Well, wouldn't that be something, John? Pete Gillen, who turned down the Notre Dame opportunity, doing in John McLeod, who took the opportunity. Boy, you talk about a Jekyll and Hyde team. How about Notre Dame? Yeah. All those great wins and some losses to uh, some obscure folks out there. Beat North Carolina, but lose to Detroit Mercy. 70-64. Buckeyes by six. out of bounds to the Wolverine. Rose complaining he got hit on the arm. <laughs> a little bit off balance when he went in there, too. See that Randy said, mm, my fault. <laughs> Consummate player coach. Rose to Weber. Oh, that's an easy one. Three or four times he's thrown up shots that had he squared his shoulders would have gone down. Right in front of the basket. Yeah, they're going to run the clock now. Randy Ayers just spread it. Spread it out. Fisher needs a foul, and he gets one from Bosco on Jimmy Jackson. <laughs> Dudley coming into the game. Hey, this young guy has played well for Randy Ayers tonight. Look at those numbers. Just a typical night at the office in the Big Ten for Jimmy Jackson. And Tim, the thing about it is that he does it throughout the entire game. I mean, there, there are periods in time when some players will get lost or lose their concentration. But tonight, he has done it the, since, since the opening whistle. He's been right with this game. Seventy-two, sixty-four. Fisher needs to score and get a timeout. One of these young guys must assert themselves here. King again an errant shot, loose ball controlled to Weber. The dump down to King. 
Now they're missing Chippy. And a foul against Weber. We're at St. John Arena where the Buckeyes seize control at home. If they hold on and win, they'll move up to 12 and 3 and 20 and 5 overall. Indiana remains a game in front of them, but check the remaining schedule. Ohio State's number five. They could be the number one seed, though Indiana has beaten them twice, but they have to go to Carver Hawkeye later in the week. Then to Michigan in Chrysler Arena. Those are potentially two L's remaining on the Indiana schedule. Well, that's possible, but uh, Bob Knight's got his club playing pretty well right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't want to give Bob L's too quickly, do we? No, no, not at all. Not, not a wise choice. But you have to admit, Ohio State is still alive for a possible number one seed. I think it's possible, but not very probable. I, I think the fact that Indiana beat him twice during the year really bodes well for Indiana for that seeding. If they just happen to come out 500 or win three of those four. Bosco. Weber trying to keep it alive. Finally, Chris puts it through, and with 49 seconds left, Michigan gets the timeout. And you see the remaining schedule for the Wolverine. They are a lock for an at-large entry. And you say, well, wait a minute, but it's true. They are a lock. They'll have to play Indiana and then Illinois. One of the games that's lost somehow in, in Michigan's uh, difficulty and perhaps losing some games they should have won and winning some games they should have lost, people forget about that Duke game. And you think about it, Duke went into LSU, one by 10, went into UCLA, one by 10. Earlier in the year, they took on Michigan, and, and the Wolverines had them on the ropes and, and let one slip away. That's how scary this team could be as an at-large team. Tim, I'm not sure there are any coaches out there who would be willing to step up and say, yeah, I'd like to play Michigan in the first round. I think a lot of them would like to wait until some late, later round. LSU and Arkansas coming up next. O'Neal and company. And there's the heir apparent, perhaps, to Shaquille O'Neal as the emerging big man on the scene. Not big man on campus. He's already pretty big on the Wolverine campus. Chris Weber in time to take over as the dominant player in the low post in college basketball. Well, the other thing, too, is he's got another guy right with him with about his same size, and he and Jawan Howard could share that post position yeah. down low. How do you see that Arkansas-LSU game? We've been around that league a few, a yeah, few times. Yeah, we haven't. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about that. I think probably if I were going to lean in one direction, I'd have to go toward Arkansas simply because they're playing in Barnhill. LSU's been so up and down all year long. Four-second differential on the shot clock. As Ohio State tries to play keep away. And they get a quick foul. Jalen Rose on Mark Baker. It'll be a foul fest the rest of the way. So Baker will toe the line. Where he is at 67% on the year. I think we used to down to read about this game tomorrow. A lot of people are going to look at the score and see what kind of game Jimmy Jackson had. But it really was a pretty much a team effort on the part of Ohio State, particularly on the defensive end. They really, they bowed down in that second half and really got after Michigan and forced them into a number of turnovers. And we talked about that one sequence where they got three baskets in a row. This basketball team of Ohio State, I think, is very good. And they're quick. When they got Thunderbird in that lineup, with that guy right there, I'll tell you what, that guy could play for anybody. A few NBA teams. In fact, Jerry West is here tonight. I wonder who he's watching. <laughs> This team is adjusting to having Lawrence Funderburg on the floor. We haven't seen any black shots from Lawrence tonight, and he had 42 coming in. He got his hand on a few and deflected some, but he was not as dominant a player in the low post. I think you have to credit Howard as well as Weber. Michigan outplayed Ohio State for 35 minutes, went to sleep for a minute and a half, and Ohio State took control. Well, they did indeed. Rose the three. Jalen's had a few trays that have not gone down for him as well. 0 for 5 from three-point range for him and got another quick foul. Bosco picks it up, his fourth. Yeah, I think the thing that really helped Ohio State tonight, you know, all year long when I've watched them on television, it's been their full-court press that really has helped them, Tim. Tonight, it was their half-court defense that I thought really did the job for them. It wasn't their full-court pressure. In the second half, they didn't get a lot of turnovers from Michigan. And what they were able to do in the half-court defense really propelled them to this win. 
Look at that. They've outscored them by 16 at the strike. 14 for Chris Gent. Jimmy King paying him a little respect. Seventy-seven, sixty-six. The classic game, closer than the score would indicate. Score. Ray Jackson, who played well tonight. The Wolverines came up empty from five minutes in. Steve Fisher waving him off. Don't foul. We'll get on the bus and go home. It's one for the scarlet and gray over the maize and blue. Michigan will be heard from in the postseason, and Randy Ayers is still thinking title in the Big Ten. It's a fun game, Larry. Terrific basketball game. For our entire crew, Tim Brando from Columbus saying so long. Ohio State 77, Michigan 66. John, it was a good one. Out another season of college hoops. Let us salute not just the Blue Devils of Duke, but also the 800 or so young men who will be able to say to their kids, "Your daddy was part of something special." Keep the tournament, and with it, more than a few shining moments. Thank you for sharing them with us. And as we say farewell to the Twin Cities, we'd like to recognize all the good folks here at CBS who brought you the sights and sounds of the tournament. And speaking for them, we hope you've enjoyed the show. Shine.